Hey, Bug Buddies, and welcome back to Bugs, Buzz, and Beyond. Today, we're diving into a really thorny and often controversial topic. Should invasive insects be eradicated, even if it means driving them to extinction? It's a question that brings up a lot of ethical dilemmas, ecological considerations, and even some fascinating biological principles. First, let's understand why this is even a discussion. What exactly are invasive insects? Essentially, they're species introduced to an ecosystem where they don't naturally belong and where they then cause significant harm. This introduction can be accidental, like a hitchhiker on a shipping container, or intentional, though often with unforeseen negative consequences. This harm can take many forms, ecological disruption. They outcompete native species for essential resources like food, nesting sites, and light. They can also prey directly on vulnerable native populations or introduce novel diseases that native species have no resistance to. This throws the delicate balance of an ecosystem completely out of whack. Economic damage the financial toll can be astronomical. Think about agricultural pests like the notorious spotted lanternfly, which decimate grapevines, fruit trees, and other crops, causing immense losses for farmers. Or consider the Asian subterranean termite, which can silently destroy homes and infrastructure, leading to millions in repair costs. Biodiversity loss. Perhaps the most critical impact is the irreversible loss of biodiversity. Their unchecked proliferation can lead to the decline and even extinction of native plants and animals that cannot adapt or compete effectively. We're talking about species like the emerald ash borer, which has wiped out hundreds of millions of ash trees across North America fundamentally changing forest ecosystems, or the Asian longhorned beetle, threatening critical hardwood forests. These aren't just minor inconveniences, they're ecological wrecking balls that can reshape entire landscapes. So, if they're so destructive, why not just get rid of them? The argument for eradication is often rooted in the principle of protecting native biodiversity and ecosystem health, sometimes viewed as a necessary act of ecological defense. Eradication can halt the spread and impact of an invasive species, saving countless native organisms from decline and extinction, and preventing further economic losses for industries like agriculture and forestry. It's like containing a wildfire before it consumes the entire forest. Removing the invasive species can allow native populations to rebound, giving them a chance to recover from the pressure. This can help the ecosystem to recover its natural equilibrium, restoring critical food webs and ecological processes. Modern eradication efforts are often highly sophisticated and involve incredibly targeted methods. We're not talking about indiscriminate spraying. Instead, techniques might include specific pheromone traps that only attract the target insect or the careful introduction of biological controls, natural enemies like parasitic wasps or specific fungi that have been rigorously vetted to ensure they won't harm native species. Sterile insect techniques, where large numbers of sterilized male insects are released to mate with wild females, leading to no offspring, are another cutting edge approach. The goal is always to minimize collateral damage to non-target species. 
Proponents argue that the long-term ecological cost of not acting far outweighs the ethical concerns of eradicating an introduced species, especially when that species is actively causing extinctions of native life. It's a triage situation. Sometimes you have to make a tough choice to save the majority, prioritizing the health and survival of an entire native ecosystem. But here's where it gets really complicated and the debate truly heats up. What if eradication means driving an entire species, even an introduced one, to extinction? Some argue that every species, regardless of its origin or its perceived impact, has an inherent right to exist. From this perspective, humans should not assume the role of playing God by intentionally causing the extinction of any species, even one that was introduced by human activity. This view often stems from a deep respect for all life and a reluctance to intervene so drastically in natural processes. What if eradicating an invasive insect has unforeseen negative consequences on other parts of the ecosystem that we haven't fully understood? Ecosystems are incredibly complex, with intricate food webs and interdependencies. Removing one component, even an introduced one, could potentially disrupt a delicate balance in ways we cannot predict, leading to new problems or even the decline of other species. Where do we draw the line? Are all non-native species equally bad? What about species that have been introduced for a long time, perhaps decades or even centuries, and have now integrated into the ecosystem, even if they still cause some level of harm? Some might argue that after a certain period, an introduced species becomes part of the new normal and should not be targeted for extinction. It's a slippery slope for some. They might argue that once we start intentionally eradicating species, even problematic ones, where does it end? And who decides which species are worthy of extinction and which are not? These are valid and challenging questions that scientists, conservationists, and ethicists grapple with constantly, highlighting the profound responsibility humanity holds. So, where do we land on this complex issue? There's no easy, one-size-fits-all answer, but many experts advocate for a nuanced and pragmatic approach. The best solution is always prevention, emphasizing early detection and rapid response to stop invasive species from establishing in the first place through robust border controls and public education. When prevention fails, prioritization becomes key, focusing eradication efforts on species that are causing the most significant ecological and economic harm, and where eradication is truly feasible with minimal collateral damage to native species. It's crucial to also consider alternatives to complete eradication, such as long-term management strategies or biological control that reduces populations without aiming for total extinction. Ultimately, any large-scale eradication program should be preceded by rigorous scientific assessment, a thorough cost-benefit analysis, and a transparent ethical review process involving diverse stakeholders. This multifaceted approach allows for a balance between our crucial role in protecting native biodiversity and ensuring ecosystem health and acknowledging our responsibility as stewards of the planet while also wrestling with the profound ethical implications of intentionally causing extinction. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution.